Hey YouTube, it's Naim Nappy, and I'm back for another Tip Tuesday. Now this week we are going to be talking about how to have a healthy scalp. Now this kind of ties perfectly in line with what we've been talking about in the past few weeks about having pH balanced hair because we learned that we have an acid mantle all over our body and scalp and it is out at 5.5. But as I stated then, that is not the only thing that matters when it comes to having a healthy scalp. Now a healthy scalp is important because scalp health is correlated directly to hair health. All right, so let's jump into some ways and how we can take care of our scalp. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to say we're going to focus on internal health, okay? Y'all, we really need to make sure we are getting enough water and nourishment to make sure our scalp is healthy. Now, y'all, water is so key, but it's the thing that most of us struggle the hardest with. We really need to be drinking that 8 to 10 glasses of water every day because if we are dehydrated, our skin and hair are the last things that are going to get water. So they're going to be dry, itchy, and very, very problematic. So first and foremost get your water in okay and right along with that the second thing we're going to focus on is shampooing or cleansing our hair now y'all i cannot stress enough how important having a clean scalp is now a lot of people love to co-wash and there's nothing wrong with co-washing but you need to make sure you are shampooing your hair at least every seven to ten days and it gives your follicles a nice chance to breathe and be healthy now y'all, the same way we take care of our skin on our bodies is similar to how we should be thinking about our scalp. So a lot of times not only do we use soap, but we sometimes exfoliate our skin because it helps to remove any dead follicles that could be clogging our, clogging our pores and causing poor hair growth or other scalp related issues like dandruff from other forms of dermatitis. So some of the cleansers I'm gonna recommend are of course, Ayurved cleansers, cause yeah, they're the but they're the best. Um, but particularly clay washes and um, herbal cleansers such as Aretha, Shikakai, or Hibiscus. Now in particular, I'm using those because they also have the ability to exfoliate as well as cleanse. Like first, we're gonna talk about clay mask. Um, you've seen me do um, in the previous weeks, a Mutani Mitti mask, I have Rasol clay mask, and Bentonite clay. Now I recommend those because they're actually really, really finely ground and they gently exfoliate the scalp, removing those dead follicles and helping them rinse away without stripping your hair of oils and all that. But Ayurvedic herbal cleansers, like again, the Retha and Shikakai, those are powerful because they're not as finely ground. They're a little bit rough. And when you use those on your scalp and you're massaging your hair with the shampoo on it, you're really allowing those dead follicles, those flakes and dandruff or oils and grime to easily be lifted and removed and those follicles are unclogged and at peak for growing your hair healthy okay now next i want to just briefly mention about conditioners as we we talked about having a good ph balanced conditioner but really it's more about focusing on whether or not you should put conditioner on your hair or not and i've heard multiple things don't put conditioners on your hair but i feel as us naturals we're kind of in the reign of applying conditioners like this and getting some on our our hair and scalp now the issue with that is um for those who have forms of like dermatitis or dandruff, that can further aggravate those issues because, you know, conditions are meant to deposit those oils and deposit that stuff onto your scalp. So that could be too heavy or causing other issues with your hair. So try to avoid it mainly, I would say, if you're having particular issues with dermatitis or psoriasis or eczema on your scalp, really try to avoid it. But if you really wanna focus on putting something on your scalp that's nourishing, then this next part is for you because we're gonna talk about oils, herbs, and massaging our scalp, okay? All right, so first we're gonna talk about non-comedogenic oils. Now these are particular oils that won't clog your pores, won't cause a lot of buildup in your hair, and that's really what you want if you wanna oil your scalp down. Now I know some people like grease, but I'm not really a fan of grease. Um, it's a little bit too heavy for my scalp, but if it works for you, by all means, I will never tell people what not to do. I'm giving you some options. Some other options of oils that I like that are non-comedogenic are castor oil, sweet almond oil, coconut oil, and jojoba oil, which we learned actually is closest to our sebum. So those are some great oils to provide nourishment to your scalp and they won't cause 
buildup in your hair. Now, along with, you know, oiling your scalp, whether you use those oils as a pre-poo treatment, whether you use them after you condition your hair and use them to oil your hair or oil your scalp right after, make sure that you are massaging your scalp either with the oils or with your hands regularly because massaging helps to stimulate blood flow and circulation to your follicles to help keep them active and alive y'all so make sure you massage your scalp i recommend at least one to two times per week to help keep your scalp healthy and nourished now lastly y'all y'all know i couldn't leave off without giving y'all a little bit of ayurvedic herbs because how can you have a healthy scalp without herbs? Okay, that's just my personal take on the matter, all right? Now I'm gonna focus on three common um, issues or questions I get regarding having a healthy scalp. And that is those who suffer from dandruff, dermatitis, which includes like eczema and other forms of like dry and itchy scalp, hair growth and hair loss. Now the herbs I'm gonna recommend for those who are suffering from dandruff and, and dermatitis are going to be neem, fenugreek, aloe, amla, and tea tree and peppermint oil. Now y'all know you can make an individual oil out of any of these herbs. You can use them as a mask. I'm gonna insert some ways how I've made um, particular things such as the neem oil. I've done a fenugreek tea, a fenugreek oil, a fenugreek mask. There's a hundred ways I feel like you can use fenugreek. If you're interested in it, you can use aloe, you can use that fresh plant, scrape out that, strain it and use it on your scalp, very healing or you can use amla, you can use the full mass. I have a video on that as well. Or you could infuse those into an oil, one of the oils that I recommended earlier, castor sweet almond oil, which I'm actually gonna show you at the end of this video if you are interested in learning how to make a um, Ayurvedic oil that focuses on healing dermatitis, dandruff, and eczema whenever you are having a bad flare up. But before we jump into that, I'm gonna finish the other things that I have here, which is hair growth and hair loss. So for those who are looking how to take care of their scalp with hair by growing their hair long, I recommend that you always include amla powder in your regimen, Bringraj powder, and Brahmi powder. Now I use those, I actually have oils um, on my page where you can infuse those herbs into oils and then use them regularly in your regimen, or again, you can use them as a whole treatment on your own. Those herbs are really great for regenerating the hair follicles down at the root, okay? So if you're suffering from hair loss, and th these kind of herbs kind of go together actually. So we're gonna move right along to herbs that can stop hair fall. Now a lot of these herbs actually have a, the, some of the same benefits of growing hair, and that is fenugreek, rosemary, horsetail, burdock, lavender, and aloe. Now these particular herbs work at the follicle or at the root level, especially like herbs like Brahmi and Bringraj, which we've talked about that can help stimulate hair growth because what happens is they can actually work right down at the hair follicle, bring blood circulation to that hair follicle to help bring life back to any follicles that have potentially died. Now, of course y'all know nothing is perfect, but you can mix and play around with some of these herbs to find which ones work best for you and also which ways you can mix and match. So maybe you're a person who likes mass treatments, maybe you prefer oil treatments, and I'm actually one that prefers oils because I can throw in all the herbs I want to and then use it on my scalp. As a lot of y'all know, I suffer from eczema, and that is why today we're gonna be making an Ayurvedic oil that focuses on fighting dandruff, psoriasis, eczema, and other forms of dermatitis. It can help us with having flare-ups and keeping our scalp healthy and happy because it's gonna contain antifungal, antibacteria, antimicrobial properties, um, other healing properties, and soothing ones for those who get that itchy irritation that can just drive you insane, all right? So let's go ahead and get mixing. All right, so we're gonna begin with using one third to one half cup of our aloe butter. Now, if you don't have aloe butter, you can use coconut oil. If you hate coconut oil, you can use extra virgin olive oil. Next, I'm gonna add one third cup of our sweet almond oil. Next, we'll be using one third cup of castor oil. You can also use Jamaican black castor oil if you have it at home. Now for our herbs, I'm gonna be using half a cup of horsetail. Now horsetail contains silica, which is key and essential for healthy hair growth. So we'll be adding one tablespoon of fenugreek, and fenugreek has so many benefits. It helps to fight dandruff, it helps to reduce hair fall, it's rich in antibacterial properties, saponins, and vitamins A and C, which help to nourish and heal a dry and damaged scalp. We will also be adding amla, which is rich in vitamin C, has anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties, which can help stop the formation of dandruff. 
Next up is neem. Now, y'all, neem is so powerful. It has antibacteria, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, a great way to curb dandruff and dermatitis. It also helps to strengthen hair follicles and encourages hair growth. The paste can also be used to help exfoliate and cleanse the scalp. So, so many benefits, and we'll be adding one tablespoon. And lastly, we're going to be adding our chamomile and lavender. Now, y'all, these are our soothing properties that we need when our scalp is itchy and we just need something to cool the scalp down, nourish it. Now, I'm going to go in with my essential oils and I'm going to begin with peppermint oil. Next up is tea tree oil. We know tea tree is so good for antifungal and antibacterial properties. Finally, last but not least, again, we're going to add in some more lavender. It has a great scent and a soothing, soothing finish to this oil. All right, y'all. So now that we have our oil, it smells really, really good. Um, I, I set this over on my double boiler for about two hours just to kind of let the oil infuse. I'm going to double strain this. And I know a lot of people have complained about um, herbs in their oil still. So I recommend using a pantyhose and a um, cheesecloth together to strain this out if you really have an issue with the herbs. I actually really don't have an issue with the herbs, but I'll be using this treatment as a pre-poo treatment and at least two to three times midweek on my scalp, massaging my scalp giving it a little bit of love. Um, I tend to have flare-ups a lot around um, the fall. For whatever change of season for me usually means a flare-up. Um, I have eczema, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Eczema flare-up, so using this will help keep that at bay. And let me know down below if you try this oil, if you use it, if you have any like dandruff and issues. Let me know how it works for your hair. And that's it for this week's Tip Tuesday. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe and share with anybody who's suffering from scalp issues or wants to learn more about scalp health. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.